Last week I went to Alaska and it was the most exhausting, difficult travel trip I have ever taken. Can't come with me this time. Give me a kiss. I love you. Mwah, I love you. How are you. Not today, baby. You come with me a different time, okay? You're gonna have fun with dad. I left at 10 in the morning and flew and traveled and layovered all the way until 5.30 in the morning. I landed a little past four in the morning, but then we have an hour drive from Anchorage to Wasilla, and I didn't get in until 5.30 in the morning. 10 a.m., 5.30. I'm exhausted. It's 5.30 in the morning. That's how long I've been awake for. And the first thing I see right when I wake up is a moose in their backyard and I'm like, this is it. I'm in Alaska, like this, I am getting the Alaskan experience. Awesome. I feel so Alaskan right now. <laughs> like I am, I'm doing it. I'm getting the experience right now. <laughs> 9 a.m. and the sun made its debut. And so this is all water. And then we went dog sledding, and this was one of the highlights of my life. Here's the most common questions we get asked about these guys is, do we know their names? And we do. We know every single dog's name. We know who their friends are, who their frenemies are. Uh, it's like having 52 teenagers. Go to sleep. They don't keep them chained up, they only chain them up when we're here. Six I dinner run? But, oh, there he is. 30,000 miles. So they only chain them up once we get everyone leased up for sleds and then they all run wild and free.
Press your mommy belly button. Belly belly. Shake mommy booty. And then the time difference starts to kick in. And every day this trip, I'm waking up at 3, 4 in the morning, New York, uh, well, Alaskan time, because my body's on New York time. There's a four hour difference. But then they have me action packed booked for Alaskan time. And so I'm only going off a few hours of sleep and I'm starting to feel like I'm getting sick. I don't know if it's from the lack of sleep or what, but I just feel... <sighs> so then my second full day there, although third day away from family because of the travel day, uh, I speak three times in one day, two of them at this woman's conference. And this woman's conference is unlike anything I've ever seen before in my life. They went above and beyond with every detail you can think of. It was wild and, and, and amazing. <laughs> And then later that night, I spoke at another fireside at 7 p.m. for the youth, which is 11 p.m. New York time. And I'm just, that was hard. But I have an aunt who lives in Valdez, which is six hours away. And she drove six hours to surprise me and say hi and just visit for an hour before she drove home. And that was wild and so good. And then my fourth day. I'm feeling sick and I'm feeling exhausted. My body just starts hurting and I like feel like I can't fully embrace or rest being sick because you're there at the mercy of other people and you're there to do, you know, what they brought you out there to do. And so I'm trying so hard to just figure it out, but I am struggling. I am struggling so bad at this point. And all I want to do is go home, but I go to church, gorgeous church, and I didn't know I was supposed to speak in front of their whole ward, but I did. And so I pulled an hour talk just completely out of my bum. Happy Sunday from Alaska, from snow that goes up to your shoulders. It is literally up to your shoulders. Look at this church building. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, it smells so good in here. It smells like a cabin. It smells like wood. I wish you guys could smell what it smells like in here. Good, a good, a good smell. <laughs> and then we make the hour trek back to the airport for what is supposed to be another 16 hour, 16 hour travel home. I'm already exhausted because I can't sleep on planes. The time difference kicked my butt the entire time. I'm starting to feel sick and just gross and a headache and I'm already just knee deep into my, my what's supposed to be a 16, 17 hour travel home overnight. And I only have an hour flight left. And then I get a text message from Gracie School saying Gracie School is canceled. And I am pleading to God that my flight home will not be canceled. I am just, I can feel it in my face while I'm praying is how much I was pleading that my flight home, just, just an hour flight home will just, it will just be fine. It was severe, severe um, wind and then it gets canceled. And then all of the surrounding areas are canceled. So then you wait in the really long line to see what they can do for you. But there are so many planes and so many surrounding cities that are canceled. Standby is not an option. The only way to get me home is almost two days later. And I lose it. I just lose it. Okay, so me and Ben were like, no, we just, our kids, my kids, they're just counting down the days. This has been a long trip for all of us. And every day the kids are like, is mom coming home today? No, not yet. You know, is, is today the day mom comes home? No, not yet. So last night the kids are just elated that tomorrow morning, as soon as they wake up, they're going to pick me up. And now they're saying two more days till I get home. And I said, no. <laughs> so Ben and I were like, 
Well, do you go through the storm? Do you drive the seven hours and come pick me up in Detroit? Uh, you know, wh where's the closest I can fly to to cut down the driving time to come get me, which could be Albany, which is four-ish hours away. So then this random lady just comes up to the area where everyone in the masses are just waiting to speak to someone in Delta. And this lady's like, I got a rental car. I'm going to Rochester. Anyone can hop in. And I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. And then one other girl that was... Um, you know, left and there we went. It's 8.30 in the morning. They can't get me out until 11.58 p.m. tomorrow. Okay, say hi. Hi. Yeah, two random strangers. We got a rental car together. Look at what I look like right now. Not only have I not slept all night, I cried my eyeballs out in front of so many. It was like the hardest I've ever cried in so long. Good Here's an update. I'm alive. We're alive. We're alive. Still strangers, as I said. We stopped. We left at like nine in the morning. What time is it now? We're almost there. Hour and a half away. Thank you for not being murderers. It would have been very interesting to, if anyone else were to get in the car, but we, you know, got lucky and blessed with two really awesome people. It took me 26 hours to get home. Are you ready to see more? Yeah, I see you over there. You see her in the green cup? Yeah. Go get her. I am so exhausted. My body hurts. I feel sick and I'm just so relieved to see the kids and I just want to complain all day about how awful my travel experience was and then our neighbor's house catches on fire. Well, real sad turn of events for our neighbors down the road. Their house is completely in flames. I mean, they got Volunteer firefighters coming running down. You see a fire hydrant right here. Like, I mean, that's going down the road about 100 feet, 150, 200 feet. That house is cooked, but luckily, I talked to one of the officers. They said that everyone's okay, but there was a dog in the house. So. And I find myself going to bed, counting my blessings, and being full of gratitude. It is so good to just be home. Spider girl, what's your name? Spider Gwen. Spider Gwen. Let's see your best move. Okay, let's see it. <laughs> Christian is not Hulk. He's Peter Parker Hulk. Okay, let's go. Let's see it. Right into the trash. Queen King Castle. A King Castle. <laughs> so then Gracie's teacher reached out and asked if I wanted to come in and talk to the kids about being an author. Well, it's not like career day anymore. It's kind of like hobby day. So you can come in and talk about either what you do for a living or a hobby. Like I think someone's coming in talking about fishing or whatever. So I'm like, oh yeah, I can go in and present because they asked me to. And I'll talk about, I don't know, like writing a book. And then I found out that they give me an entire half hour with four year olds. So I'm like, okay, what should I do? That's a lot of, that's a lot of time. So here's what I did. Paper last night and I stapled them together and I'm gonna have them like make their own book. So I'll talk about writing books 
and then they're gonna make their own books. to Montreal, Quebec. Hey, what are you doing? My family never gets to come when I go and speak. So it'll be really exciting. I'm gonna go ahead and get into this week's message and montage. Christian, do you wanna start the music? Yeah. Push the button. Right. And I'll see you next week. the woman at the well, as she sat alone drawing water, was thinking of the weight of her burdens. Maybe she was thinking how she wishes she could change things and how she wishes things were different. Maybe she was thinking how she was only there because she wanted to be alone. Or maybe that she deserved to be alone. Now there's a straight shot from Galilee through the Besson Gap. It was essentially the only route for Jews to travel for two reasons. It was fastest, and also the longer route would mean they would have to travel through Samaria a city that descended from heathen colonists. In short, they hated Jews. But Christ journeyed that route purposely. And that's when he meets the woman at the well. The disciples were shocked that he even spoke to her, a Samaritan. And not just that, but a sinful woman of a hated and despised apostate race. And not only did he talk to her, he taught her and stayed with her for two days. Maybe we feel alone and burdened, but Jesus will and does travel the long way to get to us, on purpose. Even and especially when everyone else may fail us, he comes to us because he doesn't lose sight of us, because he knows our hiding places, because we're not lost to him. Regardless of what others have done or haven't done, he comes to us and he stays with us. And what we think is a painful moment alone with a weight we wouldn't know how to explain to anyone else could turn into an intimate one-on-one -on -one moment with the Savior. If, like the women at the well, we are willing to listen and if we are willing to be taught. Do-do-do-do! <laughs> <laughs>